The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Our guest on the break will be Mr. Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com. And then on Friday, we will have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. So those folks will be lined up, and we'll be able to see those. The market's getting very strong in here. It looks like all the negotiations are going to be good. Crude oil is down $7 from the high, only trading at 106.80. And uh, the, the world is wonderful and fine, so we'll see how these markets end up uh, at the day. So uh, we appreciated the uh, speech from the president like that things are going to be well, which we've always thought that's the way it would be. And then we'll move on to see what some of these charts are doing. I posted the charts of the DAX and also the German market. You can see they've been following along pretty much what we've been doing here. But uh, that's the main thing if we're watching here today is seeing how these things uh, uh, come out. Uh, we bought gold yesterday. It looks like we're getting out of that at break even. And uh, so uh, it's also had a pretty good run. We went up to that 78% level up there at uh, 18. Try it again, Larry, 1953. Uh, We've now backed off to 1925. And it looks like we're heading down to, to the 1920, uh, uh, well, about the 1919 level. But that'll be probably uh, in a few days. But we've got the market picking up steam really strong today. And I think it's important that we remember a couple of charts here that we've been following. These are many of these, you know, you're following the news, folks. When, it, when this news comes up, it really moves, and you've got to be extremely careful. The one that we've been focusing on, and I'll bring it up to you, nothing's really changed too much. It could very quickly, of course, but uh, we're, if we can get above 4,400 today, this would break that downtrend line, folks, and that would be uh, pretty substantial, in, in my opinion, because we're getting close to those 55 days down. That's due at the end of this week. And, of course, we have these big rallies with news, and then the news goes away, and one thing happens to the next thing, and then the other. And that's pretty much, uh, you know, what you're dealing with when you're dealing with these really emotional markets. The fact that we had crude oil up $15, you can tell you the emotionalism of the market, folks. We haven't seen anything like that in crude. Let's just switch over here to talk about the oil market because I think it's important to see, uh, you know, where we've been and where we might be going. Here is the uh, recent chart here. This is over the past uh, 10 or 15 years. This is a weekly chart. I'm going to go to the monthly next. But you'll see here this is a, the, this big spike that we've had up here uh, goes back to all the way to, to 2013 when we haven't been that high. That's $115 uh, a barrel. But if we go back even farther, if you'll remember back in 2007, I want to bring this one up for you to folks to see it here. Okay, hold on just a minute here. There, here's the weekly chart. And there's the weekly chart. And we'll see, I think someone is asking me a question in here. We have a caller from Washington. Marshall, how are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Morning, Larry. Hey, good to talk to you. How's Lynn doing? She's doing great. She's uh, doing really better than she ought to. Ah, uh, she's got you to take care of her. That's why she's doing good. What can I help you with, buddy? Well, we're getting some confliction in here. Uh, uh, Jeff Hughes yesterday said he thought the 23rd was probably the, the bottom of the market. And uh, what was his name? said uh, uh, the 4th, March the 4th. And now we've got, today we've got a new moon. And so I'm, I'm just wondering. <laughs> well, you know what? Opinion. You, we're going to wonder together because I see the same thing. I'm wondering, say, gee, how can this market, uh, you know, be this way given the fact that we're coming in? But really, it's just jumping around. You know, five, six, seven, eight hundred points now is really nothing in the S&P anymore. When you start moving fifteen hundred points and stuff, then yeah, you're probably going to see something, uh, you know, pretty dramatic. But right now, we've just got to wait you know, to see what happens here. And then, you know, we could be in a total influx of a different type of market. We might be switching over 
uh, too, maybe that uh, that weekly low that we made down there on the uh, 24th is going to be uh, going to be good. So far, it's held up relatively well. You have to admit that. Are you still in touch with Bill Meridian? What's he say? Uh, well, Bill Bill thinks that we're in a, in a pretty good trading range with a bearish bias here is what he's saying right now. And uh, that was the main thing that he was looking for. He thought would be be down into uh, early April and then April would get a rally. So that's what he was looking at. OK, what about Winsky, Darn Winsky? Uh, we're going to have Winsky is going to be on next week and we'll talk to him. Of course, he's shorter term, but he's been pretty good on some of these things. So we've got that big lunar cycle coming in today. That might mean may or may not mean something. I'm not sure yet. We have to wait and see. OK, well, I, I just wanted to say uh, John Jameson really wrote a good article for your newsletter this week, and I, I really appreciated it. Well, thank you. He, did, he always does a great job. But thank you, Marshall, for the compliment. Really appreciate it. We hope to see you this spring, buddy, when you get better, okay? Lord willing, first of May. <laughs> Amen to that, my friend. Amen to that. Thanks for calling in, right. pal. Really appreciate it. Take care. You bet. Okay, folks, that was that was Marshall Robinson, a good friend and a student of many, many years ago. And he and his wife, Lynn, come down here three times a year just to uh, hang out and uh, enjoy the Tucson uh, desert weather. And we get to go out with them a few times for dinner, which is always a lot of fun. So I wanted to show you the uh, that weekly chart of the uh, – I, I, it slipped my mind here. Hold on a second here. This is the weekly now, you remember back in 2007 when we were setting at $144 a barrel, Goldman Sachs came out with a really extensive report saying that crude oil was going to $200 a barrel, and here's why. Well, the here's why was they were shorting it, and you can see it went from 150 all the way down to 30 then back up to 119 and of course we're trading at 100 and well 105 now 112 last night so uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of emotionalism coming in remember when this oil goes up like this this actually helps uh you know countries that have high uh, pr production of oil we used to have that but uh, we haven't had it lately but we still have people like um uh, well, Russia is a big co a contributor, Venezuela still, and, uh, of course, Iran and Iraq and Saudi Arabia. But so that they benefit from these uh, huge spikes that are coming in. And I believe by just looking at the open interest figures, they are going in and they're hedging some of this oil at these higher prices. So that's uh, the main thing of what uh, what we're watching here, uh, looking at some of these things. So I think it's important that we remember these because uh, that's where the— the real thing lies as far as where we need to be. Now, let's talk about another market here that has been going ballistic, and we haven't seen anything like this uh, in my lifetime. Uh, and I, I didn't think wheat would ever get above $9 again, but uh, by golly, you can see here wheat is a trading limit up at, uh, and hasn't traded for quite a while, too, uh, at uh, 10.59. Those of you, I'm going to have, have to something to tell you here this, that uh, Timmy from Wisconsin. Uh, one of uh, one of our students. It's very important. I'll, I'll cover that when we get back. It's about how markets operate in stops. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, I was mentioning that the rules have changed on stop orders at the Chicago Mercantile and Board of Trade. If you trade these markets, you should go to the website and check on check on how they handle stops because it's totally different than what you might think it is. If you used to have a stop, let's say you were in the S&P right now and you had a stop at 43.75, a buy stop and all of a sudden the market closed, and then it opened at 43.80, uh, and then continued to go higher, you could not, you might not even be out of that stop because they have set their own pri primary, uh, I think it's, I'm sure it's based on artificial intelligence and standard deviations, uh, where the market should trade within a range, and you could, but you might not be able to be out of your position. I was, someone schooled me on this yesterday, and I was totally shocked. Uh, usually I'm, I don't screw around with these real wide markets, so that's one of the reasons I don't notice it. But if you're in these, you better go to Chicago Board of Trade, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and CME is where you want to go. And it'll, it, they have rules there of how these things work, and they're very extensive. And uh, But you better be careful, especially in these markets. It's really uh, see what's going on here. Anyway, okay. This is uh, the question about uh, whether this war is going to end or not, folks. <laughs> I'm probably the last one to know that. But, the, you know, the market's acting really strong today. It's oversold, for one thing. And the second thing is, is, you know, the uh, things are never as bad as they look and they're never as good as they seem. So, you know, we're going to get through this with no matter what happens. That's, uh, that's my opinion. And uh, everybody has their own opinion, of course, but that's what I'm watching. So... Those are some of the things. We're going to have some great volatility. When you got wheat at almost 11 and it is probably $11, given the fact that it's been loaded up for so long, 11 or 12 whatever it's happened to be, and you go back in a month, you'll say, gee, why didn't I see that top up in there? Well, that, that may or may not happen, but all we do with pattern recognition is to try to find low-risk entry positions. That's the whole thing of uh, you know what I'm looking at. Perfect example today was uh, in the gold yesterday. I said, you know, uh, we shorted the gold. I had my stop a little bit too close uh, by about $2. And then you'll notice here that I said buy it on the pullback there at, at, at 19.25. And, of course, the market rallied up to 19.39, $14. And at that point, I said put your stop, you know, at your break-even 
in, it's probably not any good. And of course, that's exactly what happened. It's trading down to 1917 right now. And I'm flat gold after being out of it. And I'm going to wait. Boy, okay, we're back. The chicken is in the pot. The eagle has landed. Okay, um, we were talking about the gold, so we're flat the gold now, and uh, we're waiting to see uh, what's going to happen here with this uh, full moon and new moon that we've got going on uh, right now. But right now, we got up all the way up to the 78% level now, and the S&P, I saw just a minute ago, my alert went off there at uh, 475, so uh, we'll see what's going to happen with that. And we've got crude oil down about, crude oil being down $7 after being up $15 yesterday is no big deal. I mean, that's the whole the whole key of what these things are doing. The big deal is, you know, we haven't traded wheat for about four hours, and that is that is a big deal. You know, everybody eats, you know, some type of wheat, either noodles, rice, pasta, whatever it happens to be. And so, uh, you know, this is going to be a big deal for raising your inflation expectations with crude oil and food and stuff like this. Folks, get ready. You know, this is, uh, this is uh, going to be, this is going to go on. This is not going to end overnight. You know, uh, maybe it will. Hey, shucks, what do I? I'm just giving my my uh, two cents worth. Let's switch over to something that we all should be watching here. This is the U.S. dollar index. Follow the money, and if you know, this is the dollar. The dollar has been very strong up into this 97, 98 level. That completes the big A B C D pattern up in here, and if we reverse this and look at it the other way of where the euro is, see the euro is breaking down now, folks. Take a look at this euro. We've been bearish to the euro for a very long time. This is the weekly here, and the daily has just been going down, 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 and our, uh, we're going to go somewhere between 109, which is our original, and the secondary one is at 106. That means that dollar index is probably going to get pretty close to par is the way what it looks like. So that's it. Yes, the wheat is locked up pretty tight, uh, Mr. Z, I understand. And uh, the uh, cash market is actually going crazy. If you can find anybody that will even sell it. From what I heard uh, yesterday, I talked to someone who's heavily involved in the wheat market. And he said, if you've got orders to fill and you don't have the wheat, you're in big trouble because nobody is selling. Because the old ad is you got to buy them when they're crying and sell them when they're yelling. And boy, they're yelling, but nobody's selling. So that's... Uh, that's what is going on in that market. You got to, you know, you, you don't have to try try to stay away from the real crazy weird stuff, folks. I mean, I I dabble in a little bit. And when I dabble, I know I'm not anywhere near any limit up move or anything like that. I'm not going to do that because you get you can get trapped like this in the wheat. Now, when it when it's over, it'll drop two, three dollars or more a bushel. But until that happens, you, you got to assume that it's still going to to go higher. That's the bottom line of what you're looking at. Look, I, I wanted to show you wheat. I showed you wheat on the uh, long term uh, wheat. Look at this one here, uh, what it looks like today. This is wheat as being limited up. Let's just show you again where we are here. There you go. See, the other day we went from 960 down to 860. 
we were looking for support to come in at that 61% retracement. And, of course, it reversed the next day. And the target on this is $11. Uh, and we're trading at 10.59 right now. So just for educational purposes, this is not a say go sell wheat at $11, but let's watch wheat at $11 because there's a big ABCD there, and that could be really exciting to uh, to see that. We'll see if that's going to be happening now. Okay, uh, farmland, yeah, that's a good thing to buy. You can't go wrong. They don't make it anymore. That's the main thing. And it is pretty expensive these days, folks, the farmland. Uh, out there in the Midwest, because uh, I have a lot of uh, customers and friends uh, through that area that are in the farming business, and believe me, they're not hurting when it comes to the real estate section of this part. Hey, we're going to be back with the Wolf Trader, Shane Smolian, right next, and tomorrow we will have uh, Tim Boss, and Friday will be Stan Harley. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have the wolf trader himself on the line. Shane, are you there? Good morning, Larry. How are you? I am very good, my friend. Hang on, please. I forgot to put my mic in, and we're ready to go here. Why don't you tell the folks what you're looking at today? It's, we have a big lunar event coming up, don't we? Isn't it today? Yes, we do. We have a new moon, and I'm going to talk about that, actually. It's a very strong new moon with themes of war, 
obviously that's going on. Uh, so it's, it's an intense moon for sure. Uh, so we, we talked last time about our theme was it's all about the future. So I'm going to continue on, on that theme, uh, but I'm going to start out with the quote of the day first here, uh, which I think is fitting for what's going on. And this was an Albert Einstein quote where he says, I know, I know not with what weapons world war three will be fought, but world war four will be fought with sticks and stones. And I thought that was kind of an interesting quote given the situation we're in right now. Uh, obviously, this is a, this is very serious, and um, it's, it may just be getting underway based upon what what these charts are saying. So, but our focus is really on on the market. So let's talk about that because it, it it does affect. Obviously, you're talking about wheat limit up and these other markets. Obviously, it does affect markets. Uh, but what I'm looking at right now is um, more more so what's going on with the Fed. But we're we're going to talk about this now. Today is is uh, an interesting new moon. Uh, from the Iranian perspective, uh, this is a new moon based upon war aspects. If you look at the the meaning of this, uh, the new moon is here. This is the fourth harmonic. I mean, the new moon is going to be in Pisces, but this harmonic, what this does is this lines up the sun with Mars, which is a planet of war. But this is an exact alignment within one quarter of one degree. And then we also have uh, Zeus Volcanus midpoint on top of that. So these are the three big war players here. Uh, in terms of the the astrology that we look at, uh, I mean, Mars Saturn is the military energy too, but th this is really uh, profound because this is this is literally def uh, translates into great wars. So the fact that this is just starting today on the new moon suggests that something big is just beginning today, uh, and this happens at twelve thirty four today. So uh, I just wanted to bring this up. I mean, maybe <clears throat> maybe it's not as big of a deal, but. Uh, I just wanted to to show you that you know this is a very very exact planetary picture, and uh, it's very rare to see this type of an alignment lining up for a wartime situation. So uh, we're definitely on the lookout for 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 what's going on with the war right now. Now, obviously, they are intensifying the war efforts here. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Larry. They're they're like paratrooping down into cities. It's it's like that movie Red Dawn. Yeah, uh, it's it's getting crazy. I mean, there's multiple cities now. Uh, being invaded. So this, they're definitely ramping this up before. And Russia has a, a history of starting out slow in some of these campaigns and then and then picking it up later. So uh, we really have to be on the lookout for this. So we're talking about the, uh, the S&P 500. I'm going to give you some things that I'm focusing on. So these are my areas of focus. Uh, it, it might be a little bit different than what some people look at. Everybody looks at things a little bit differently. Uh, but the thing, you know, the thing that I want to focus on right now is that we are seeing lower highs and lower lows. Uh, there's there's this famous death cross coming uh, in the S&P. It's about three weeks away, but it just happened on the NASDAQ. But the, this is the big one here. The Fed is ending QE. Uh, and I'm, I look at the Fed juice and the Fed internals, and these are falling. So the, this this is what's driving the decline right now. I mean, the war is there, and it's it's creating a lot of headlines. But this is what's driving it. Uh, I, I focus on the spread between the 10-year and the 2-year. This is flattening. You talked about this yesterday. This is important because this can uh, point to recession, and this also will limit what the Fed can do in terms of, of rate hikes. Uh, I like the planetary steliums. I think that this is a very good indicator. It's picked the last two tops in the last couple of months. There's two more coming, uh, so I focus on that. The double lunar cycle we focus on. And then I, I want to focus more on the unintended consequences of what's going on with this war. So, for example, the SWIFT, the removal of SWIFT could be a problem. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the cyber attacks, that's something that's out there that people don't talk about too much. But, you know, retaliation now is the digital age, so we have to look at that. And then the Nord Stream um, pipeline, of course, is a big deal. That That's running from Russia down into Germany. Uh, and then, of course, the inflation. So this, this affects the Fed because the Russian inflation on oils and grains means that the Fed really has to try to control the inflation. So this kind of is ruining... Uh, the Fed's, you know, if they were hoping not to want to raise, this is kind of ruining it because this is creating a big problem. Now, things that I don't focus on too much right now, uh, number one, I don't focus too much on earnings right now. I don't think it really matters as much. Uh, this decline has been happening in, in the face of good earnings. Uh, sentiment, I don't think it matters. The Fed is deflating. Uh, peace talks, I don't think it matters because I, the war is not what's causing this decline. Uh, the wild hooks off the lows, you know, this market has been seeing some really sharp hooks off these lows. I don't really pay attention to that. I'm looking at the bigger, uh, lower highs and lower lows. This has caused a lot of emotional behavior of people. Um, I just look at the big picture. Uh, I don't look at the past behavior of the lows at the lows during quantitative easing 
because this is not a caterers paribus uh, scenario. What I mean by that is all things are not equal. Uh, the Fed is removing stimulus. So do, I, I don't look at what the market did a few months ago and say, wow, it's going to repeat it. It can't. It's a different situation right now. I don't really pay attention to cycle lows because if the Fed is deflating, it may not be able to make a low. It may just have a pause in the selling and then continue down. I don't care about the rate hikes as much. Um, rules of thumb about war. Let me talk about this. A lot of people like to talk about the fact that at, you know, when the war starts, it's a market low, and, and traditionally that's that's been the case. But I, we got to be careful about that because you know major major wars have happened at the end of protracted market declines. I mean, you talked about 9/11 was towards the end. If you go back to all of these lows, you know these they were at really really uh, extended market sell-offs. We're, we're just really beginning the sell-off in the S&P. Uh, and then the concept of the if-then scenarios. I think you got to be careful about this. Um, if you say, well, if it breaks this level by this date. You know, then this this happens. The problem is that if you do get a big sell-off, it might be too late. So I, I don't like to get too much into that. I try to focus on my bigger term fundamentals over here. And that's just kind of my mindset. I mean, that you know, everybody's different. Everybody has a different way. But that that's just kind of how I'm thinking right now um, on this market. If we take a look here, the, the, the spread is down to 0.39% between the 10-year and the 2-year. And that's really uh, pointing two things. It's pointing to recession. And it's pointing to the fact that the Fed may not be able to raise as much. Again, I don't think it matters that much. The big deal is that QE is ending. Uh, but if, if you put these two side by side, you know, you can see the two-year note has sold off much quicker uh, than the 10-year note over here. And so that is, that is, uh, that's not a good sign. I mean, that you, you don't want to be seeing that. Uh, and, especially, and, and the Fed's got to deal with this. They got to deal with uh, the inflation, the inflation going on in Ukraine. Um, you know, just just if you just look at, so, you know, we were talking about wheat, but if you just look at soy and the soy meal and the soy soy oil, I mean, this this has just recently spiked just on the Ukraine invasion here, and, and Ukraine is obviously the bread ba basket of Europe. Um, so so these are problems. I mean, and these are problems that are it's going to make the Fed have to stay tight on some of these policies. So uh, that's not good for the market. I mean, and, and it's not good for for consumer prices. And and one thing I want to point out too is that you know we look at food and, and oil as, as annoyances that they're they're going higher and, and and you know people were like well we'll we'll uh you know we'll pay higher price for gas to you know for this situation i don't look at it that way i look at it this is national security you have to be able to feed your people you have to be able to get the tanks down the road the planes in the air uh and so and the hummers down the road and so that's this is national security. So I, that's another way that I look at this. This is not just about annoying prices going higher. You got to look at this from a, from a, a national perspective. Hey, this was a really great uh, dissertation, my friend. Please stay with us, folks. Sure. The Wolf Trader, ShaneSmolian.com. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back, folks. We're talking with Shane Smoley in the WolfTrader.com. Shane, we have a question from one of our listeners in Warsaw, Wisconsin. The question is, what happens if these war things that you're looking at, aspects, do they ever reverse? In other words, it looks really, really negative, but in fact, the market uh, sees it as positive. Does that ever happen? Well, okay, so let's talk about the new moon sets the tone for the month. So we're really talking about this is a new moon. So we're talking about two weeks here. It's just setting the tone for the month. So it's not it's this is not a, you know, long term in terms of like a year or two years or something. But I just I thought it was okay. highlighting the theme here. So Okay, you know, good. No, that that's yeah. that's what. So you're looking at a at a band here of a couple of weeks then. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, just, it's good. The tone right, of the month. Fine. Yeah. Um, so the peace talks. I thought this was interesting. Uh, just a little bit of astrology here. So Mars and Venus were conjunct, which which is good, and it was trining the node. They definitely did meet, but that did you know that didn't really make sense to me because they were still fighting when they were talking about these these peace deals. Uh, so yeah, that didn't make sense to me the other day when they were doing that. The swift bans. I do want to talk about this. I think this is going to have unintended consequences. You're going to have people defaulting, like retail people can't pay their mortgages, commercials defaulting. Central banks are probably going to have to step in and make the me clean up the mess that they're causing with this. So I, I don't know if that was such a good idea. I mean, I understand why they, they're trying to do it, but this could have unintended consequences. Of course, we've got this pipeline. Uh, running from 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 Russia down to Germany, this could be a problem too. That we got to we got to un understand that these these things can have consequences down the road. So uh, let's talk about the S and P. So S and P status. So this is my stance on the S and P. This is uh, the best asset class to be short in right now. Like if you're short S and P, like that's a pretty good thing. I mean, Nasdaq's a little bit weaker or cash. Uh, we're coming off a of planetary stellium high. Uh, th these steliums may just be serving to pause the market declines. Uh, the Fed internals are collapsing. We're down to 25% of QE. This is really what's driving the decline. Uh, S&P continues to make higher, uh, I said higher highs, lower highs and lower lows. I should say lower highs, sorry. Lower highs and lower lows. Uh, this is a classic fear trade away from S&P towards gold and bonds. Uh, but we have also the oil and the, the grain thing going on with the Ukraine. That's really an interesting, fascinating scenario. Uh, the double lunar cycle is still down, and then we actually we actually have a, a negative divergence in the Fed internals, which almost never happens. And I'll talk about what this is. Th this is not good because what's happening is the Fed is trying on an intraday basis to stimulate the markets, rejecting it. Now I know today it's up. It's up because the Fed is talking about. I don't know what he's saying. He said something about. <laughs> he's talking about there could be more than one reserve currency. Now I don't even know where where he was going with that, but that that's what he said, and and they went kind of crazy with that, but. The big picture here, guys, is we're making we're making lower highs and lower lows. I mean, that in the end of the day, uh, there's these huge emotional reversals off the bottom, but they're not really going anywhere. Uh, we're continuing to see these, and this is like investing 101. But I know a lot of people have been getting very emotional, bears turning into bulls at these lows. But the bottom line is, it's it's still it, it's making sharp hooks and then stopping. 
and then stopping lower than it was before. So, you know, let's look at that first. I mean, if that stops, if that stops, then, you know, then we'll, then we'll have something. Also, we're coming up to what the death cross and the death cross is the 50 day crossing the 200 day. Now, this isn't going to happen for about three weeks on the S and P, but it is in process. And, and this is, this just underscores the concept of the momentum is coming out of the market we're seeing these lower highs and these lower lows and that's that that's saying a lot for the S&P because the S&P has been so strong for so long. If you look at the Nasdaq here, the Nasdaq is, is it, it just happened yesterday. So the Nasdaq is leading the way down. This is a much cleaner chart in terms of the lower highs, lower lows. This is almost like a, a, a like a linear uh, trend down into here. But the main driver and I want to emphasize this to everybody. I know the wars and the headlines. This is the driver, guys. This is what's happening. The Fed taper is declining here. We're going to be at zero at the end of this month. This is the big deal. This is what's taking the markets down. So I know we want to talk about, you know, Ukraine and Russia and wheat and oil. This is this is the big deal right now. So we've got this short term volatility from the war, but this is the long term. And when you put these two side by side, you can see that this uh, this is the S&P on the top here that we're coming down right with the Fed taper, just as I expected that we would. Now we're seeing this wild volatility back and forth and back and forth, but the bottom line is we're consi consistently seeing this deflation. So this has nothing to do with the war. I just wanted to point that out to people that this this is based upon what's happening with QE ending. So uh, you know I've talked about this before, and to, to I've been you know can't talk about it anymore. But it's happening, and it's and it's consistent with, with like you said with our thesis of what's going on. And I think that's what's important. We got to have a data driven thesis on these markets because it's it's very confusing. This was the planetary stelium. We talked about this before. This was 1987, uh, but you can see that the markets made a really strong peak here in 1987 with the stelium, and then it sold off. So we're in the process right now of seeing a, a four-peak stelium. Uh, and so this is the daily chart today. You can see this chart here. Uh, you can see these planets are lining up, uh, and it's gonna. there's another peak coming towards the end of this month. I talk about it in the newsletter. Uh, and then there's one more coming at the end of May. After this stuff is done, uh, I, I think it's going to be even harder times for the S&P. I mean, this is what's holding up the S&P. These steliums are, are, I think, are pausing the selling in the S&P. And so once these end, you can see here, this was the planetary stelium index here, that as the stelium rises and falls, the markets rise and fall. So this is why, why I go back to the concept of I'm looking at the steliums. For an astro indicator, this is what's important. Uh, this is what's driving the markets. Uh, and of course, there's two more of these coming up. Uh, there's one coming up at the end of this month. There's another one coming up in, in May. And then they, they really kind of go away at the end of the year. So I think what we're seeing right now is the reason why this has been such a molasses sell-off in, in some people's terms on the S&P is simply because we've had a lot of planetary conjunctions up there uh, from the planetary standpoint that are helping this market uh, stay together in terms of just it's it's not going off the cliff yet, but that doesn't mean we're not deflating. We are deflating, and I want people to understand that. And and I don't think you should be comparing what's going on right here with what happened back in October or what happened because if you look at back here in October, um, we still had QE and the Fed was launching these huge inflows here. We don't have that now, so you got to be careful. I mean, this is this is not caterus paribus. This is not all things being equal. Uh, it, it's a different situation. And so the, the, uh, the double lunar cycle is in a sell-off right now, and it is ex expected to continue to stay in the sell. It went in the sell on, on uh, February the 2nd, and it's expected to continue lower. So uh, these are just some things that I'm looking at, Larry, and I think that they're, they're, they're important. Well, they sir sound important. Shane, I've known you for about seven years now, and just by the inflection of your voice, you really... You really have a strong conviction about this. I mean, you've always been very, uh, you know, right to the point. But I don't know if it's just me or, but you really have an inflection in your voice about this. You're really trying to make a point, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. My goodness, this is uh, really exciting what you're looking at here. So your basic theme here is the overall structure. Of this has nothing to do with uh, the war that's uh, going on or or the Fed. That this is the fact that these things have turned down with lower highs. And lower lows, and we should pay attention to that. Absolutely. I mean, that's investing 101. But the problem is the market has a way of tricking us and making us think that lows are, are, are you know, that that these these false terms off the lows are actually lows when not, they're not necessarily that's not necessarily the case.
Well, can you stay with us, my friend? Because sure. we'd like to hear uh, you know some of the services that you have when you come back sure. and how the folks can reach you. Shane Smolian, folks, thewolftrader.com. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, Shane, you've got a real a strong array of products. You want to tell the folks how they can reach you and uh, some of the things that you're offering, especially your, uh, your free webinars that you do. I think they'd be interested in that. Uh, yeah, you can reach us at wolftraderfutures.com. We have multiple newsletters. Whatever market you're interested in, we have something there. Uh, we have S&P, metals, energy currencies, cryptocurrencies, and we have other plans that are together. But, the, you know, the main thing is if you want to get some more information, come by on Saturdays. We usually have a webinar every Saturday at uh, Wolf Trader Futures. That's that's the website here. Uh, and you can also just uh, – this is the YouTube channel, Wolf Trader Futures, but you can also – Visit Twitter at WolfTraderFUTU1. Uh, stop by. Uh, send me a, qu uh, a question if you have one. We have a chat feature there. Uh, I, d I did want to talk real quick about the S&P, a couple more things here. Uh, S&P on this hottest cycle, this is one of our big cycles that we follow, is in the process of a decline still on this. So uh, we got to be careful about this. And this was a big chart, too, I wanted to talk about. The Fed internals on an intraday basis. The S&P is having a negative divergence right now with, with what's going on with the Fed at intraday basis. 
what th what this means is that the S and P is overpowering the Fed right now to the downside, at least on an intraday basis. And this is a rare scenario, guys. I'm telling you, this doesn't happen very often. This is a warning sign that things are getting very weakened to here. So be careful. And so the one thing, Larry, I want to tell everybody is you can always be safe and have your money in cash. I want to warn as many people as possible about what's going on here because the signs are pointing to something much bigger, much bigger sell-off coming. So just be careful out there, everybody. Uh, you know, it's, like I said, cash is a, is a completely rational and safe uh, alternative right now uh, if, if the market gets really crazy. Well, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you on again soon, and we appreciate all the things you do for us here at TFNN. Okay? Thank you so much, Larry. Have a, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. You bet. Shane Smolian, folks, willtrader.com. We'll have Stan Harley as our guest tomorrow. And on, let's check that. <laughs> It'll be tomorrow. We'll be Tim Boss. Friday, we'll be Stan Harley. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Thank you.